tell the truth, we started because there was money to do it. Uh, in Spain, they started a, a program of uh, quality PhD studies with big public subsidies to do it. We could bring in teachers from the outside. We could bring in students. We could teach in English. And that sounded like a great deal, so we, we started at that stage, just for the money, purely commercial Intercultural studies doesn't mean much yet. I, I hope that in time it, it will. Basically, it's, we're doing translation studies, and I wanted the orientation not to be construed as a part of linguistics. That is, I don't want to exclude linguistic approaches by any means, but I didn't want my colleagues to see this as a part of applied linguistics. I wanted to integ integrate cultural studies, uh, comparative literature perspectives, if, if one likes, sociology increasingly. I wanted it to be translation studies as a real interdiscipline. So uh, that's why the intercultural studies is mm -hmm. there as a market for things that are going to come later on. Our students come from really all over the world. Uh, we're in Spain, but we're, we're teaching in English. We're encouraged to teach in English. So we've had students really from all the continents and from all the hybrid mixes of con continents and, and cultural backgrounds, as one would expect in a field like translation studies. And that's been one of the great aspects of the program uh, from my perspective. The teachers, we've had money to bring in teachers from wherever we, we want and to pay them pretty well. So we've got what I think are some of the best in the field. Uh, over the years, we've had a fair range of the big names in translation studies. They come in, they teach in English, mm -hmm. and so that's been really good as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the problems you have encountered? Some of the problems. Lo lots of problems. <laughs> lots of them. Uh, the first problem, and it's not just me and it's not just this program, but the first problem is with academic bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. uh, for a start, um, so-called harmonization in Europe means that in some countries you're doing uh, doctoral studies with coursework as we had it before here and now in Spain and I think about 25 percent of the countries to 30 we're not really sure uh, they wanted to, to divide it up so the coursework is done as a master's mm. and then the PhD program is just thesis writing uh, so much for harmonization some countries are going down one track other countries down the other mm. To add to that, in Spain, most countries have got a 3 plus 2 structure, 3 years BA, 2 years MA. Mm -hmm. Spain has said, thank you very much, we're going to do 4 plus 1, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the structure is that after 4 years of undergraduate study, uh, people could come in and start doing their coursework to do a doctorate, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it is at the moment, legally. Okay. Uh, we haven't been accepting students at that level. We want them to have a master's before they start our, our advanced master's. We're not allowed to call it an advanced master's, but we are. Uh, so th that's a struggle. Other problems? Um, oh, well, they're more local problems, but the grant structure. We can get grants for students to do their PhD studies for, for four years, basically, which is great. But the students have to come more or less straight from their undergraduate studies or straight from a master's. If they've got more than two years outside of the university system, they can't get the grant. Mm -hmm. Now, because translation studies is related to a series of professions, some of the best students come in with work experience, mm -hmm. with more than two years work experience, right. particularly interpreters, people in the localization industry mm -hmm. coming in with really good perspectives. Mm -hmm. And we can't give them grants because of this rule, which is you know, based on the way things operate in the exact sciences, mm -hmm. if you like. Right. We're in a particular part of the humanities related to professions, mm -hmm. and that formula doesn't work for us. We only have, at the moment, four grant holders. Mm -hmm. two, three, sorry, plus two, five. Five mm -hmm. grant holders mm -hmm. uh, in our program at the moment, and the rest are self-financed. So those would be some of the problems. Um, other problems, 
Yeah, uh, we have a, a very high dropout rate, attrition rate among mm -hmm. students. But that's, I think, the same in, in, in PhD studies that are not uh, based on students getting grants, although we've had students leave even when they're getting grants. The reasons are, I think, related to the profession. Mm -hmm. uh, one girl doing very good research or with a grant from us uh, became a translator in, in Brussels uh, with the European Commission. She gets more money there. She gets great work experience there. It's a great career development mm -hmm. step. We're not going to compete with that. And uh, you find that, that uh, many of our students come in, they, they're, they're professionals, mm -hmm. they've got young families, mm -hmm. and they're trying to do a PhD on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it becomes too much. And something has to give, the one that gives is often the PhD, which goes on the back burner and might come back after they've had two children and have advanced to a comfortable level in their career. Mm -hmm. But, okay, on the other hand, those people bring in great work experience. Right. So there's a give and take, mm -hmm. um, at least with respect to that. Some students come in mm -hmm. and they are, if you like, too professional. Uh, they'll come in and say, well, I don't really have to do any empirical research because I have all this experience in my mm -hmm. profession. Mm -hmm. I know what the market's like. I know what best practices are. I'm going to tell you in my PhD mm -hmm. thesis. Mm -hmm. That takes us a lot of work mm -hmm. to get through to them. No, we're doing research here. You're going to have to do some basic research methodology, uh, get some data, formulate hypotheses, test mm -hmm. the hypotheses, and not tell us what you're going to discover before you do the research. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we have the coursework for, to get through those very basic research methodologies.